How is everybody doing this fine day? So um, for those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Alan Roberts. Uh, I am widely known as an asshole. Uh, and I, I, I am, I'm just, I, I, this is a weird video I got, I got, I'm going to do because we're talking about a guy that's basically dying. That's eating him, he's eating himself to death. And it's a weird topic but it's one that needs to be spoken about because this is not the shit that like the media is going to like propagate and all the fat acceptance people are going to ignore this shit. And, uh, but this man is eating himself to death. Uh, and I, 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 I wish him, I, I wish I could say, I think he's going to recover. He, I don't think he is like, I, I, I think he, I think that the toll that he has, I think what he's done to his body, I think that uh, I think that the end is very near, and that is uh, super tragic to me. You know, I I personally uh, I personally have known people that have eaten themselves to death, and it gets weird for me because like I picture in my mind that if I would not have had the epiphany, like if Crystal wouldn't be in my life. If all of if all of like everything else happened without her in my life, like would I be him? You know, like w- like would I w- would I have eaten myself heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier if my wife and son weren't in my life? And so like I can envision myself like being being him. So it's it's weird for me, and I I want everybody to know like I, I wish this man nothing but the best. But I think it's important that we talk about this because, first of all, I think that he was kind of awesome to being crazy. I think that he was kind of taken advantage of a little bit. But I also think he highlights like what I keep saying, where when you are super morbidly obese, you just need to treat it like. Like the, like it's the addiction it is, you know, like and I don't think we're doing that in society. I think that people are like not realizing that it's addiction to ultra processed foods and addiction to like gluttoning yourself. And I just wish that, uh, I wish we would see it. I, w- I wish, I wish more people would, would, would understand. And this is not to knock anybody that's ever tried to help this guy. He was on a show with Chris Powell. Chris Powell is somebody who I used to look up to greatly. I believe he's kind of sold out a little bit, but that's a whole different topic. Uh, I did think that I, I really enjoyed his shows, like, the, like his extreme weight loss, his extreme makeover weight loss edition. I truly enjoyed them. Oh, hang on a second. Uh, I, I, I really just wish that uh, I really wish that, you know, it would be it would be seen differently. It would have been done differently, you know, like uh, because now that I look at these shows, because I really used to look up to him a lot. I really, and I, I remember watching this show you know, with with uh, with David Elmore, uh, David Elmore Smith, and uh, Chris Powell. I remember watching it and thinking, like, how awesome that was. You know, uh, I can tell you that if I if I did a show, it would be very very different than what what these guys do, like, because it would be much more like intervent an intervention about about the addiction about this, and. I just, I think that like society needs to get there more. Like now people are probably going to be, people are probably wondering like, how does that line up with how I address, you know, morbidly obese people. And if you're new here, if this is your first live and all you've seen is like short videos of me, you'll, you'll think that I, you will you'll likely think that I uh, just make fun of fat people. Well, I have this thing that I always say that, you know, fat jokes are like bald jokes. They're true because they're funny. They're funny because they're true. Excuse me. Right. And I, I, I don't think that we should not like. Lie, I don't think we should be lie. I don't think we should be lying to people's face by pretending that they're OK, because this gentleman, this guy's story is going to happen a lot more often. When we have a society that, that pretends that being 300 pounds for an average height person isn't catastrophic. Like this guy was 650 pounds. Once you hit 300 pounds at average height, you are begging to die. 
I'm, I'm just I, and I'm if you're in the if you're in the comment section or you're watching, I am not saying that to be mean. I am saying that to be nice. Like that is if you have never heard somebody say that bluntly like that to you before, it is what I've just said is like likely the nicest thing anybody's ever said in regard to that, because when people tell you you're fine at 300 pounds, they are literally lying to your face. They know you're not, you know, you're not. And it's like, I, I think people wonder why I like, why we put ourselves out there. Like, cause like, and if you don't know the whole story about like what Crystal and I have been through about, about all this shit, you know, just as a quick recap, like these, like the fat acceptance people literally came for us. Like they tried to destroy our businesses. They tried to make it so nobody, like we, this is before cancel culture was even really a thing. And they came after anybody that commented on it. Like there's literally a, 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 a there's literally like a documentary about how they tried to cancel Crystal and I by go, going after the people that were in our, that, that followed us, that were in our lives. Right. And I, I still stand like, like what crystal and I will basically stand as a couple alone together if nobody else will, because we've coached probably a thousand, more than a thousand people right now. Probably it's probably bordering 2000 people right now over the course of the last six years that I just really think that people need to understand, like we've helped a lot of people go from very seriously morbidly obese to healthy that have gained lives back. We, we have seen people come to us not able to even really walk that much. Like I remember when, uh, for people that have watched me for a while, the sing, the, the guy that sings in the band, uh, Moxon Creek, um, Jeff McCool, he's still one of my very, very good friends. Uh, and he's, he lived, he like didn't live with us. He stayed with us for like a couple of weeks to try to get his shit together because he was 415 pounds when he came to our house, um, when he came to, came to stay with us. And his physical capability was he could swim, which basically was floating. And we just had him stand up more often. That's how bad of shape he was in. He's doing great now. He's in the two sixties or two seventies doing great, like living, living life, having fun, you know? Um, and he's a big, tall man. He's six, five, former, uh, former football player, that sort of thing. But, We've put ourselves out there and I, I, I think it's necessary because there's not many people that are willing to say this is fucked up shit. Like, because in reality, it's messed up. Like it is tragically, tragically messed up uh, that like people are lying to other people's faces. Like I want, as we're gonna read about this man, and we're gonna look at his stories. Um, we, this this is a, a, a life that was wasted. This is this is a life that was completely squandered by accepting what doesn't need to be accepted. And I just wish people could understand that. Like this man accepted what did not need to be accepted. He threw and he's addicted. He's an addict. But I will say this. That's not an excuse. I, I, I wish people could understand that. Like, we don't give the, okay, well, let, just let the alcoholic drink themselves to death and be a burden upon society, because that's a part of it too. This gentleman has probably, like, he's probably been accessing medical care for the vast majority of his life. And that's tragic also, because that's like, you are burdensome upon society. And you know it. Like, you know it. Nobody can tell me that this man did not think of himself as a burden. Nobody can tell me that this man doesn't realize that he, like, that he, he, that he has squandered his life. And I don't say this to be mean. From what I understand, he's a very nice guy, you know? And I, I just wish, like, I, I, I wish that people would see that we can't coddle this shit anymore. Like we, we can't coddle gluttony and this type of thing. Where we can't, we can't live in a realm where reality doesn't exist. And 
I normally say it in a very different tone because I'll, oftentimes the people that I discuss on this channel are people that just kind of flaunt their fatness and they flaunt it and like as if it's like not actually a thing, like they're in complete suspension of reality. And that is dangerous because the more people don't call that shit out, the more young people or other people that are in their position, then, and it is not, like it is not. Like I'm, th this, it's such a ridiculous thing. Like, I, 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 w I wish people would understand that we, everybody should be telling every fat person they know, what can I do to help you? If you're fat yourself, go look at yourself in the mirror and ask if you, th like, literally talk to yourself. Do you think that how you're living is sustainable for a long, happy, healthy life? If you have children and you weigh 300 pounds, go have an extremely serious, long conversation with yourself and ask yourself what you are teaching them because being fat is all they have known. If you are if you were 300 pounds when your children were born, if you are a man especially, and you were 300 pounds when your children were born, you being morbidly obese is all they have ever known. And you are impressing that upon them. And you need to have a conversation with yourself if that's how, like what you want to give to your children. And if it is, I'm going to say maybe you shouldn't have had children, right? I was very fat. Like when, when, when I first met my son, I was in very good shape. I was just a big guy and I lifted a heavy weight and then I got very out of shape. And then I, when I went to get back in shape, I just started lifting heavy weight again. So I stayed big and fat, but I got stronger. And that was a horrible lesson to show him. He's an adult now. He works for our companies and we talk every day about, and he knows how I feel that I am literally embarrassed that I showed that example to him because it is indeed fucking embarrassing. And I just wish that people could understand that if you do not have these conversations with yourself, if you are a morbidly obese person, you are looking, what you are about to look at is a possible future for you. You don't need to end up 600 pounds to die from obesity. I have seen people that weigh 300 pounds and all of a sudden their health just spirals out of control. And it can happen very easily. When you're that big, when you are 300 pounds, especially if you're a woman and you're 300 pounds, because no woman should weigh 300 pounds. It's just, you shouldn't. When you are that big, no woman should weigh 250 pounds, to be, to be honest, unless you're extremely, 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 extremely tall, maybe a complete genetic outlier who, with lots of muscle and maybe an extra portion of chromosome, something like. But you cannot, like, even imagine, like, you, you, if you sprain your ankle, you can't move. You normally can't even do crutches. You know, you, you can't even do crutches. And it, if, and if you do, you're very highly risk, risking your, your, your other ankle. And normally that comes with even less, less, uh, less activity and depression eating. Because if you are a 300 pound person, a 250 pound person, you do not have a good relationship with food. And, and unless you are an extreme genetic anomaly, you do not have a good relationship with food. You should accept that to yourself. And it can spiral out of control like that. I have seen people that don't like, and another thing that they do, and this gentleman didn't do this, but another thing that they, that is done in the, by the fat acceptance community is they have everybody convinced, everybody convinced that all doctors are fat phobic because they tell you to lose weight because you should fucking lose weight. And they then convince these people not to go to the doctor. Well, if you have untreated type two diabetes and you don't go to the doctor and you are fat as fuck, you could, the next trip you need to, might make to the doctor is because your toes start falling off. And that's a real thing. That's a real thing. Or you get necrotizing fasciitis of the skin folds and you, they have to like start cutting sections of your body off. That's a real thing. Or you just throw a massive cardio infraction, infarction. 
or you throw a stroke or your kidneys shut down as is what's happening with this man. Like you need to understand that if you are morbidly obese, you should be visiting and listening to your doctor. I am not saying you should be put on every medication of the sun, but you should at least get your blood work done to find out if you are diabetic, you should have your, uh, your ejection fraction checked on how well your heart is working. You should get your blood work done and you should absolutely take your health super fucking seriously. I just had somebody in the chat say, you know, I am like, like you're, you know, you're healthy at 250 pounds. You're not. If you're a woman in two, one of 250 pounds, you've got a fucking problem. You, you do. You've got a fucking problem. You've got a poor relationship with food. Okay. So we're about to take a look at this. And his name is David Elmore Smith. And I want all of you to wish him the best possible outcome. But at some point in time, and I'm, this is good, about to be very brutal, but at some point in time, the best possible outcome for him will be painlessly going in his sleep. And I, I know that that sounds really fucked up, but this man is suffering. So wrap your heads around that shit. Because this man is suffering. Here's the article. And I hate how the this article is written, by the way. I can't stand it. I absolutely can't stand it. 650-pound virgin whose balls don't work, unrecognizable, dropping, uh, dropping 400 pounds in hospice. Like, what the fuck? Okay, David Elmore, uh, Elmore Smith, shot to fame. Excuse me a second. Uh, shot to fame uh, on the TLC TV special, 650-pound virgin, shedding more than half of his body weight with help from personal trainer Chris Powell, but piled it back on. And that's the biggest problem because Mr. Powell, uh, I'm, and I'm not saying he didn't do this, but... It is about lifestyle habits. This man does not need to work out hard to get this weight off. At 650 pounds, it should like it should have. I'm I look back on these shows and I see where they're incomplete. I see where it it doesn't actually talk about like you know getting addiction counseling. Where it doesn't talk about you can't like they always teach moderation. If you're 650 pounds, the food that got you there cannot be moderated. You cannot eat it in a moderate capacity. If you weigh 650 pounds, if you weighed 650 pounds, and the thing that that always gets you to slip up is pizza, don't ever eat pizza again. At some point in time, it needs to be looked at as addiction. As absolute addiction that will fucking kill you. All right? One man who weighed 650 pounds and had never had sex looked unrecognizable after dropping more than half of his body weight, but now he's piled it back on and is, quote unquote, in hospice. David Elmore Smith appeared on the TV, uh, TLC TV special back in 2009, where he was helped by personal trainer Chris Powell to shift 400 pounds. David looked incredible after his transformation, sporting huge biceps and even get, getting himself a girlfriend. At his heaviest, he had weighed 710 pounds. Before his weight loss, the star confessed he was too afraid to go outside during the day because people would stare at him and laugh. That's why you were afraid? Like, that's, that, see what I'm saying? Like, that is not a help. Like, who, I, of course they're going to look at you. Like, that is not something you should ignore. Like, if you if we ignore this, like, so you're going to let yourself get in this little box, right, of only people saying positive shit and, or only people or only not negative shit. Of course, they're going to look at you laughing at you. That might be a little fucking hard, but uh, the harsh. But I'm sorry. If you would have accepted this and tried to use it as catalyst to change maybe you would not have gotten to the stage you got into. Uh, on the show, he revealed, until now, my life has been nothing. I ate, I slept, I watched TV, and that's about it. And that is, if you add and did TikTok videos, that is half the fat acceptance community on TikTok. If you say, I ate, I slept, I watched TV, and I did TikTok videos, that is pretty much anytime you go to TikTok and you type in fat acceptance or fat liberation, and you just... Look at the videos. Though that is those people. They ate, they slept, they watched TV, and they did TikTok videos. Um, he quipped, "Instead of being a, a a dud, I want to be a stud. 
Appearing on the Today Show in 2009 at his lowest weight, David documented his incredible workout and diet journey along with Chris. Uh, the longtime virgin even got himself a girlfriend, Megan Povar. He lost his virginity age. Uh, uh, he lost his virginity age 32 when Megan was 18. Kind of fucking creepy. Just saying. Uh, they later tied the knot. I, that's too. That's that's a huge age difference, especially in the circumstances. That's crazy. Uh, but since then, David has piled back on 300 pounds, skyrocketing up to 500 pounds. In 2012, he could he could already feel his health deteriorating once again. You fucking think so? I mean, Jesus. Uh, he revealed, I've gained more than 250 pounds in two years. So that is 125 pounds a year. That is 10 pounds a month. That is gluttoning yourself. That is absolutely gluttoning yourself. And with all the extra weight so quickly added to my body, I don't think, I, I don't know how I'm still living right now. The way I'm going, I'm not going to live too much longer. I mean, he's made it fucking 11 years. Um, this is him. Next, This is Chris Powell, and this is him. Where do you see him now? David said, although he looked really good on the outside, he was a terrible mess inside after losing so much weight so quickly. He said, all my life, I was this monster in my head. And all of a sudden, to be this good looking guy, it blew my mind away. I didn't know how to deal with it. So there should have been some counseling going on if you always thought you were a monster in your head uh, anyway. And that's, uh, they, I feel they let him down terribly. He had undergone multiple surgeries in an attempt to get rid of the excess skin from his weight loss, but none had succeeded entirely and left him scarred. I mean, they have to cut off huge sections of your skin there's going to be scars. I, it's If you weigh 700 pounds, you cannot expect that you're going to look like to your ideal. That's not realistic. You know, somebody should have sat him down and been like, look, this is the best that's possibly going to happen, but at least you'll be alive. And the skin, like at, at, at some stage, fuck aesthetics. I've always said this. It is not about looks. It is absolutely not about looks. People that people that think it is, you're kidding yourself. Once you get so big, it is about saving your motherfucking life. Give up the concept of being some fucking, you know, Adonis. That's not reality. Reality exists. It exists. Get there faster. The star turned to drugs and alcohol, but eventually went back to binge eating and his weight spiraled out of control. So he's addiction, he's addiction trading because binge eating is his absolute addiction. You know, uh, the star said his newfound fame wasn't easy to cope with either. Telling the day show, it was tough. A lot of people were counting on me to be, to be inspiring. I didn't want to let anybody down, but I just felt so bad. I didn't know how to cope. And I'm sure as he gained weight, people were very fucking mean to him too. Uh, that's another reason why you don't monetize massive weight loss. Don't monetize it. Don't, like your personal journey should be not monetized because people want to see you fail, right? Thankfully, Megan stuck by him at the time, encouraging David to uh, David to head to the gym and try to shift the weight. Shift the weight. In 2012, she said, "He's finally finally ready." At the time, of course, I'm going to be there. This is the moment I've been waiting for since he started gaining. For him to really want to be healthy again. Sadly, it appears things ended between the pair. And in his latest social media update this week, David was using a CPAP machine to aid with his breathing. He seemed to be having difficulty speaking as he updated fans in a video. Today has been one of the two worst days of my life. He admitted he's going to hospice two years ago. He was hospitalized and in a coma going in and out of various medical facilities with reports his kidneys are failing. In an update about his ex-wife, Megan, David wrote online, I never told anyone, but my ex-wife left me because I never had balls. No balls, no kids. He even tested at 0%, no sperm. Um, well, I mean, why the fuck? If, or, I'm, I'm sorry, but this is going to be very harsh to say. Don't have children with people that are 700 pounds, that have been 700. Like, I, I don't know what else to tell you, Right. Like, you, 
it's not like he would be like, here we are 10 years later, he's in hospice. It's, it's just, I hate to say that. I, I, I really do. I, I don't take pleasure in that. But again, reality exists. Okay. The guy she married got her pregnant. I couldn't. As soon as she kicked me out, uh, kicked me out, he moved in. She had me watch the kids after work, 12 hour shifts in a call center. He went on to allege she had the kids lying about the new improved guy. I broke down. The youngest was adopted by the guy writing on the wall. I'm overwhelmed with emotions. I don't even understand what that means. Uh, David claims he is under 400 pounds with only half a working kidney and says his balls never dropped due to swelling in an Instagram post shared with fans. And that is actually a real fucking thing. If your child, male child, is super morbidly obese, sometimes the balls don't drop. Uh, it really is. Uh, super fucking tragic. Just super, super, super fucking tragic. Um, give me a second. So this is his Facebook page. Okay. This is 13 hours ago before the hospice. 710 pounds, highest weight, 311 to 22, 710 pounds, my highest weight, 3122, 2021, TMI, 1226, 2021. I tried to use a bedpan today. So this is the TMI I've been like, I mean, I don't even understand. So this TMI I've been constipated for a few days now. It hurt me this AM. So we did an enema an hour later. It didn't work. I'm in some pain and it felt like my poop couldn't get out. So my nurse put her hand where the sun doesn't shine and pulled it out. I'm a lot better now, but yeah, it was awkward. Would well, you think so? Um, I, this, I, I feel so horrible for this dude, but this is reality for a lot of people. Uh, th this is reality for a lot of people that and I want I want to point out if he would have had children if he would have been able to get his wife pregnant what would be happening right now like let's let's be realistic what would be happening right now it's that's super bad i mean it's really it's really 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 bad it is not about a diet it is not about an exercise program. It is about literally changing your entire lifestyle. I talk about this all the time. We have a population of people right now that are extremely addicted to ultra processed foods. And people, I, the argument with, you know, the argument of like ultra processed foods aren't addictive and sugar's not addictive. You're going to have to miss me with that. All right. Like you can try to like the, the food and the big food and pharma can try to pay with whoever they want to pay to try to pretend that that's not a real thing. I do this for a living. These are the people I deal with for a living. These, like, we have clients come to us three, four, five hundred pounds. Fuck you if you say that ultra processed foods and sugar is not addictive. Fuck off. You can, you can lie to everybody else, but I see it. Daily. Daily. You can't lie to me because I know better. My wife and I for the past six fucking years have done this every damn day. You cannot lie to me. You cannot try to pretend that how we're eating, the food products that we're eating are the things that are killing people because most people are addicted to these things. This gentleman is dying of addiction. He's not dying of, of being fat. He is dying of addiction. And it, the biggest problem is it is not recognized as addiction. So that is why the entire population is getting fat as fuck. It is addiction. And I'm sorry, I don't give, I, I, if you're an addict to this, I will help you, but I am not going to fucking coddle you. I am not going to tell you, no, it's okay. It is addiction. Fix this shit. Stand the fuck up 
and demand your life from your addiction. It is a war between you and the addiction. My war has gone on and I have beaten it every day for two years, 10 months, and five days today. So fuck off if you try to say it's not an addiction. Fuck all the way off. I am so sick of hearing that shit. Fuck off. People need to realize that this is where we are at in society. This man's story is not, is absolutely not going to be abnormal at all in the coming years. The wave of chronic illness, disease, and death that is coming from how fat we are as a society is going to be fucking biblical. I have said it so many times and nobody wants to take it seriously. And every time some huge fat person dies, nobody talks about it. And they want to try to pretend like it's some sort of anomalous thing. Who the fuck do you think does most of the dying under, under 70 years old? Fat people. Who the fuck do you think does most of the dying of cardiovascular disease? Fat people. Who the fuck do you think does most of the dying from type 2 diabetes? Fat people. Who the fuck do you think does most of the dying from liver disease? Fat people. Who the fuck do you think does most of the dying that's not elderly? Fat people, because fat people don't become elderly. So miss me with that shit. We need to absolutely start recognizing this for what it is. This is addiction. You are either going to address it and deal with it and deal with it every day for the rest of your life, or you're going to die from it. And I'm sorry, I'm not the fucking person that's going to just hold your fucking hand and tell you, okay, die from it. I'd rather be rude as shit, mean ass motherfucker, known for being a mean, nasty motherfucker, for telling you the fucking truth that it is your responsibility and it is your fucking fault and you can fucking fix it, you can fucking change it and you need to do it if you wish to not fucking be seen as a person that is eating themselves to death. I'd rather be that motherfucker than one of these other fucking people that is just going to lie to your goddamn face. I would rather be that. I would rather be absolutely fucking hated. They can make 10 documentaries. The Fat Acceptance Community can come at me every fucking day. I don't give a fuck. I don't. What the fuck are they going to do? Roll past me on their fucking wheelchairs or fucking like walk, you know, try to attack me? I could just walk backwards at a fucking slow pace and outrun them. So what the fuck are they going to do? They're going to say more mean shit about how I look? I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. They're going to say more mean shit about my family? I don't give a fuck. They're going to say more mean shit about my fucking, the people that follow me? I don't give a fuck because I will tell you this right now. I am not going to stand around and watch people glutton themselves to death. It's not fucking happening. I don't give a fuck. What the fuck? I do not give a fuck. Like, people are like, oh, he's so mean. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Have you ever seen that one fucking, that one thing? I'd rather be, there's so many worse things to be than fat. I'd rather, I'd rather be fat than mean. Really? 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 I'd rather be fat than, than judgmental. Really? You haven't been fat long enough, motherfucker. You have not been fat long enough. At all. Whatsoever. It's not fucking happening. I, I mean, you have not been fat that fucking long if you'd rather be fat than mean. Because I've been fat. And I'm considered mean. And I'll take this way the fuck over being fat. Way the fuck over. It is ridiculous in society for us not to be calling this shit out. It is absolutely ridiculous. And I'm sorry if people cannot see it. They want you fat. You are the fucking biggest consumers there is. You are the biggest consumers there are. Crystal and I are going to do, we're, we're talking about doing this thing in January. I always hear all the time, I can't afford to eat healthy. I can't afford to eat healthy. Crystal, her and I in January, besides one day, because our son's birthday is in January. But besides one day, we are going to, from Gordon's Foods, likely get a big thing of rice, a big thing of beans, some salsa, and we are going to get uh, a, like an eighth of a cow, like for $400, my wife and I are going to eat for a month and I will likely be in better shape at the end of the month than I was at the fucking beginning of the month. I will probably be leaner, stronger, and feel better because I'll be getting fiber, carbs, protein, healthy fats every fucking day. And I will love it because you can just change the fucking seasonings and it's completely different. I don't want to hear that you can't afford to eat healthy. Beans and rice are cheap as fuck, motherfuckers. And if people are like, oh, so they can't enjoy themselves, they've enjoyed themselves too fucking much. 
How, how can you people not see this? They have enjoyed food too fucking much. It's not a, it's not a realistic thing to expect to be able to just indulge in something. That's like, that's, that is like, literally like a drug addict being like, what, I can't occasionally take a bump? No, you, no, motherfucker, you cannot occasionally take a bump. Uh, I, I, just, I just drink on the holidays as an alcoholic. No, you won't. No, you fucking won't. If you are an alcoholic, you will start drinking and you will fucking drink until either you are stopped by hitting rock bottom or you are stopped by fucking going to jail or you are stopped by dying unless you stop yourself. And the same is for food. What we just saw is a dude that is dying from food addiction. He is dying from food addiction. And people can say, well, it's his trauma. And people can say, well, this. And people can say, well, that. They can say all these things. But that manifests in addiction. This man went, turned to drugs and alcohol and then went back to binge eating. That's how addicted he is to the binge eating. I, I don't even understand. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I, I really don't. Like, do you, they, these people like want to be lied to. Like, they want to be lied to. Like, don't get me wrong. When you eat ultra processed food, the vast majority of your life, your brain does not develop that well. And that's not being mean. That's just fucking truth. I mean, we've gone over on this channel a dozen times that when you feed a child ultra processed foods in predominance for their childhood, they don't develop the same amount of gray matter. They don't develop the same reasoning skills, cognitive abilities. They are stupid compared to their lean counterparts. Reality exists. So I don't understand why we are not calling this out. We know this shit to be true. Stop believing that the food pyramid is anything but a gift to the fucking pharmaceutical industry and the big food industry. Because that's what it is. And people are like, you can call me a conspiracy theorist all you want. The government saying you should have six to 11 fucking servings of carbohydrates, including ultra processed foods, is in fact ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. Do you know how much ultra processed food you should have? Technically none. It's not fucking food. It's not fucking food. You should eat it just for pleasure. You should consider ultra processed foods the same way you consider alcohol, just for pleasure. And instead, we have like literally McDonald's is giving away French fries. McDonald's this month is giving away French fries. Do you know why? Do you know why? They made six plus billion dollars in the last fiscal quarter. They were making over $2 billion a month in profit. So of course, have people eat more fries because more people are gonna come and eat the rest of your shit that they're addicted to. It's ridiculous that people don't recognize this shit. This man that we just talked about, who by all intents and purposes, from everything I've read, seems to be an extremely nice guy that people really sympathize for and really feel, really feel bad about. But I just wonder, I wonder, if maybe Chris Powell wasn't too light-handed. Like, at some point in time, be a cheerleader, but also be realistic. Like, bro, you're eating yourself to fucking death because you're an addict to this shit. It's like nobody ever told this man he was a food addict. Like, nobody ever told him, like, this is the thing that's going to fucking kill you. And anybody in his life, like his wife, not recognizing that he's a food addict and letting... And I will tell you this right now. There was, before the, before, right before the last binge I had, two years, 10 months, five days ago, I was overeating. I had lost weight and I was overeating. And my incredible, beautiful, gorgeous wife, who I know loves me more than anything, said, you're eating a lot lately. Are you okay? You are, she was like, I think you're overeating every day because she loves me. And that sticks with me because she will she would not accept me just wallowing in, in my addiction she will not accept that this woman's wife who was 18 when he married her when he was 32 um it's fucking she will not let me do it she will be there for me this woman's, uh, this woman's wife, this dude's wife was not there for him. She didn't recognize it as an addiction. My wife knows. My wife, my wife 
like my mother, I love her to fucking death, but my mother for fucking years, every fucking year would give me peanut M&Ms in my fucking stocking. Full ass on adult. Full ass on adult. The one year she gave me a big one pound fucking jug of it, right? Because she thinks it's love. Little old Italian lady, food is love. So Crystal would hide that shit and then throw it away because she loves me, because she knows that that shit will kill me. I have nightmares about it. I have nightmares about peanut M&Ms. That's what addicts do. And we need to recognize this. We need to see this as a society and help these people. Because if we do not help these people, they are just going to die. And if you don't give a fuck about them, if that's not reason enough, and I hear this all the time, like, you're so mean, you're so mean. Like, why are you so mean? Well, there's this thing called empathy. Uh, like, I don't want to see people suffer and die. Uh, well, what about their mental health? You're fat as fuck. Your mental health is already fucked up. You're, like, you're fat as fuck. You're 300 fucking plus pounds. Your mental health is already fucked. You are not in good mental health. Period. You should way much worry about your, you, you, you have a better chance of fixing your mental health by fixing your physical health than you do you fixing your mental health first and then fixing your physical health. Because frankly, being fat as fuck affects your hormones. It affects it, like your entire personality. It causes depression. It causes anxiety, those sorts of things. Being in a constant inflammatory state, plus the food you're eating that also helps you be in an inflammatory state as ultra processed foods have been shown to cause depression and anxiety you're not going to be in a good mental state when you're fat as fuck. So when people say to me like, what about their mental health? What, what, aren't you worried about their mental health? Their mental health is already fucked up. If I can help fix their physical health, then we can fix their fucking mental health too, hopefully. And they're like, well, they need to fix their mental health first. Shut the fuck up. It's not happening. They're gonna keep eating themselves. They're using food as a mechanism to fucking self-medicate from their mental health. How can people not see this? Like, do we think, you you really think, and this is, this is, she'll never admit this. Do you think Tess Holiday wants to be a bowling ball? Do you think she wants, wants to like, literally like worry about like sitting in her car and having it fucking bottom out? You think she wants that shit? I can guarantee you deep down, she does not. I can guarantee you deep down, she does not want to be that size. She has just relegated herself to that is literally the best she can do. So her defense mechanism being an addict and having like the fucking maturity level of a fucking teenage girl is that she is going to flaunt her fatness and she is awesome. And she it, it, being fat is phenomenal. She's mentally ill. The problem with her is that she has an audience and she is literally convincing them to do the same types of addictions and have it be okay. It's fucked up. It's fucked up, fucked up. So I wish this David L uh, Elmore Smith, and again, this is going to sound very, very, very harsh. I wish him the most peaceful passing he can have. But it does not look like he's making it out of this. I just hope that he is able to find peace. And his pain can be so, his pain can be minimal before he goes. I truly would love to wish that he could recover, but I he it just does not re, like I am a big person. And I say all the time, reality exists, and that's not a reality for this man. We have we are this man is has eaten himself to death's door, and it's highly unlikely that he's going to come out of it. It's just highly, highly, highly unlikely that he's going to come out of it. I wish I could come up with a different way, like, uh, like, you know, like a different method to mass, to mass distribute, like, like the concept and idea, like, like the show he was on clearly did not fix his shit because I don't believe it addressed it the way it was supposed to. Like I said, I look back on these shows. I look back on the biggest loser. Like you guys know, like, if you don't, if you don't know how I feel about the biggest loser, Go watch some of the videos I've made about them. It's the it's it's the literally systemic emotional and physical torture of morbidly obese people for advertiser advertising revenue. It's it does not it, these it does not help these people. It does not help these people. Like 
convincing them that they should eat a thousand calories a day and then run for five miles on 400 pounds does not help them. It's just, it's stupid. Like the, any, anybody that had like, that's why I, that's why I have very little, that's why I have very little respect for anybody that was ever involved in the show. Like Jillian Michaels, like she can sometimes like blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then normally because she's like actually saying shit that I've said for fucking years. I don't know. I, she probably doesn't know who the fuck I am. I, I would actually have a hard time that she believe that she doesn't know who I am, but, but reality, I think she's a fucking idiot. I think anybody, I, I think all of them are fucking idiots. Anybody who was ever involved in the show, you're either an idiot or you literally do not care about the systemic, emotional, physical torture of fat people because you either don't know what you're doing to them is actual emotional and physical torture or you don't give a fuck that it's emotional, physical torture. Like at the very beginning of that show, they used to have the fucking temptation challenges. The fuck is that? That's like fucking having an alcoholic fucking uh, like an alcoholic show and like tempting them with their favorite shot. What the fuck? It, it's so insane. It's so insane. But we just need to start viewing this for what it is. We have a population that is likely over 50 fucking percent addicted to ultra processed food and sugar. And it is going to be extremely, extremely, extremely horrible in the next fucking uh, next decade or so. Extremely horrible. So I'm going to take some, uh, I'm going to take some questions. If you've asked a question already, re-ask it right now uh, at the bottom. I'm going to start right here. And here we have a Zempic being prescribed to people with mental problems even though uh, warning not to give it to them, uh, they're gonna. They're, they're, you watch. They're gonna start saying that it is actually good for mental for mental health. You watch. You. They're doing the same thing with Ozempic than they did with the Pfizer Jimmy Jab. They were with the Pfizer Jimmy Jab. They were trying to say that, like, literally. Do you guys remember, like, a couple years ago when they were like, people that take the jab don't die of other shit too. They live longer, and they were trying to say it's because they have more common sense, even though you had no common sense um, because it was a cold. But like they're doing the same thing. I called it like, like a year and a half ago, two years ago, saying that they're going to push these things like they pushed the Pfizer jab. That it's the end all be all. It's the cure for obesity, period. And it's a miracle. Meanwhile, not really that effective. It's not. It's not really that effective. If you're 300 pounds and you lose 20 percent of your body mass, you're still 240 fucking pounds when it's over. As a newsflash, you're still morbidly obese and you have to keep taking it just to keep that 60 pounds off reality exists they say that it's in their fucking literature that's that's not effective effective is taking a 300 pound person and having them weigh 170 pounds over the course of a year or two and or the, the, i think their test is 70 for Mangiorno, it's 78 weeks 300 pound person 78 weeks weighing uh, under 200 pounds easy easy with healthy lifestyle skills proper nutrition healthy hydration, proper sleep, those sorts of things. Easily. 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 Um, speaking of that, I am going to, while we're doing questions, I am going to start, uh, I'm going to put out a few things here. Products. So here's one. This is the three month coaching. We find it here. Mm -mm -mm. Actually, you know what, guys? I will be putting all these out later on today or tomorrow. I want to make sure I, I'm, going to, I'm going to rename them all and have it, have it be good for you guys, everything like that. Um, give me a sec. All right. We're just going to do Q&A. I will say this. Ah, hang on. I think I got it. Q 
me what jeez what's going on here there it is We're going to do one. We're just going to do one today. We are going to do the six month coaching. Actually, wait. All right. Let me go down here. So we're at, have you checked out the show Secret Eaters? I can't watch it. It's disgusting. I can't. I can't. I, it, it's, it's, it's what we always say. It's what I always say that, I mean, people eat more than what they claim, period. It's not even a it's not even a debate. Anybody that ever says like I eat in a caloric deficit and I can't lose weight, you're a liar. Uh, you're a full on liar. Uh, I hate to say that. Well, I, mean, I really don't hate to say it because you are. You're a liar. Um, and that's it's that's the problem. People 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 don't really acknowledge the fact that like matter is not created from nothing, <laughs> and uh, you're not just going to gain weight or not lose weight when you are like eating and like if you're in a caloric deficit you're losing weight if you're not losing weight you are not in a caloric deficit reality does completely exist um here we go this is uh this is the black friday uh book special okay so i want everybody to look at this this is the black friday Book special. Two for one. Now, the thing about this is for this one, okay? I want to explain this. For this, you and, and the people that are already on the app, by the way, on Black Friday, you will be receiving a notification about this. You will be getting both books that we have, and we will send you an invite to, uh, to have somebody else join, like another person join. So you can have a friend of yours join on you, right? Uh, but if you join right now with this, you will get both books and you will also be able to have somebody else join with you. You pay $9.99 a month and they can stay on with you. As long as you pay $9.99 a month, that person gets to stay on with you. So that is the Black Friday book special. Give me a second. This is the six month coaching special. Now this at checkout will take off 33% from this. So that's amazing. Limited six month. And we have only three slots from that left open. So that is daily communication, weekly video conferences. You have your own private chat with Crystal and I. You can have uh, the consultations be with either Crystal or myself. It's all good. Um, uh, have you have you seen Foodie Beauty updates? She has type two diabetes, high blood pressure, refuses to take medication, and now now she's fasting. I uh, I don't give a fuck about her. I'm, I'm just I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do I. Because I, I I literally said she had type two diabetes the last time we last time I did a video on her because she had all the telltale signs of it. It's not that hard to predict, uh, and I just she's a horrible fucking person. Like I will I I'd help anybody. Don't get me wrong, but if I can avoid helping shitty ass people, I'm going to avoid helping shitty ass people. Um, just because. <laughs> Just because this is also Black Friday three month special. This also is at thirty three percent off. So if you need coaching for three months, here's your here's your Jimmy Jam. Now I'll I'll do the rest of the Q and A for about five or six minutes, and then I'm gonna go cook some food, ground meat and rice. <laughs> uh, I will leave the mental health profession if I have to be involved with the idea that Ozempic is mentally healthy. 
They're going to push for it, though, dude. I mean, you know they are. I'm sorry. You know they are. But if you do decide to leave that aspect of it, maybe we got something. Hang on. Uh, there's already been a uh, Zempic link death. There's been many of like death. There's going to be many of those Zempic link deaths. I would imagine it's just like the fucking other, uh, other thing that people were sticking in themselves. There's probably many more than the, what is advertised. Uh, many, many, many more. Alan, did you see that the Who's saying some ultra processed food is healthy because it's fortified? Of course they're going to say this. The Who is also going to is also trying to make sure that they uh, like they take sovereignty over countries when they declare a new pandemic. So, yes, I did see that. I'll probably do a video on it too. Uh, I'd reached a plateau after gastric sleeve surgery, and the dietitians kept saying it's normal to ex to accept it. What can I do to get past the plateau? Uh, either increase your activity or uh, increase your activity and or decrease your caloric intake. A plateau means you're in homeostasis. You know, I do. I do. Uh, M like if you are on the app, send me a message. If you're not, join the app. But I think I could. You know, I think we could help you. We have many, 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 many people that are on the app that have already had uh, gastric sleeve surgery that have either hit a plateau or they did not weren't advised on how to build a healthy lifestyle. The problem with this uh, is that dietitians don't know shit about healthy lifestyles. They know about how food interacts with the body and doctors don't know shit about healthy lifestyles. Most of them are fat as fuck also. So uh, we have many clients that have had gastric sleeve that we help build healthier lifestyles, manage their hunger, those sorts of things. Um, so please do, uh, send, if you're on the app, send me a message. But it is because you're at homeostasis. If you're not losing weight, it's because you're not in a caloric deficit. Reality exists. Uh, you can get way more rice for uh, from a 99 cent, a 99 cent one pound bag of rice than a 99 cent box of rice aroni. A five pound ba uh, bag of potatoes is 99 cents. A 10 pound bag of tater tots is five. It's, it's so it, like crystal not like. And don't get me wrong, we don't splurge on food because we like eating very basic, but it is like, we are going to eat well. If we buy the quarter cow, it's ground meat and steaks. <laughs> like, it, you know, I mean, we have, we have so much, we're eating ground meat right now, but we have so much meat in that fridge, right? In that freezer right now. I mean, it is awesome. 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 Uh, I'm going to get my blood work done today for the first time since taking alchemy. My A1C was getting a little too close to pre, uh, pre diabetic before my liking. Please let me know how that goes. I'm very interested in it. Um, did you see the Dems have made media literacy courses in some schools teaching how to recognize conspiracy theories and hateful news? What is a conspiracy theory? I was called a conspiracy theorist for three and a half years for saying completely true shit. So, I mean, what exactly is a conspiracy theory and what exactly is not? And who determines what is what is misinformation? Like the concept is if you are determining that it's misinformation, tell me how. Like if you think that I am saying something that is not true, you're going to have like I always say this. Explain it to me like I'm five. If you can't explain it to me like I'm five, you can't tell me that I'm wrong. Right. Because you don't know because you don't know. But yes, I did see that. Crazy. The world we live in. Uh, have you checked out? Yeah, I, 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 sorry, I already talked about that. Family tells me I'm too strict with food and exercise after losing 164 pounds due to a gastric sleeve I had. They don't realize surgery is not permanent or a cure. I'm, God, loose skin fashionista. First of all, fabulous fucking job. Great fucking job on losing the weight. That's amazing. And people, like, I know people say, like, well, she had gastric sleeve. That's cheating. No, it is not. I keep saying this to people. It is not cheating because they absolutely have to very closely watch what they eat, especially after you have the sleeve, depending on what type you have. If you have a duodenal switch, you have to really, like it changes your whole fucking life because it changes your entire digestional tract. But a gastric sleeve, they have to really, 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 really watch their fucking uh, intake and you have to build healthy habits around it. And the hardest one to build for a lot of gastric sleeve uh, recipients is proper hydration because your stomach only holds so much, you know? But great fucking job and tell your family I said fuck off. So, uh, just saying. Uh, I used to sneak, eat, hide behind cars. And every every fat person sneaks eat. I, I mean, everyone, every single one. I think Crystal fucking, uh, I think Crystal probably found thousands of fucking candy wrappers over the fucking course of the years. She smiled at me, so that's true. 
Uh, do you think your product too will be a substitute for metformin taken for PCOS? Do I think it could be? Well, I can say this because uh, I, I can't, I got to watch because the pharmaceutical industry will put out a hit very quick, but I can say this. It has a, a concentrated form of berberine in it, and berberine has been shown to be more effective uh, for management of PCOS symptoms than uh, even metformin because metformin has certain side effects where berberine works as just as effectively in managing insulin sensitivity um, uh, and uh, managing blood glucose levels, that sort of thing, as uh, metformin. Also, it has NC2 in it, and NC2 is amazing at stabilizing blood sugar levels, stay, stay, uh, reducing the glycemic response of food by up to 48%. So the data, I can say this, the data says, yes, I do think it should be a replacement for, for metformin. The data says that, yes. Not me, the data. Uh, she didn't lose much, uh, then she thinks even, uh, she didn't lose much, then she didn't even really get it. I don't know. Uh, Alan, uh, I already talked about that. Yes, no question today. Just wanted to show appreciation for your passion and, uh, and dedication to help. Oh, shit, that reminded me. Thank you very much, Puzzle Peanut, but I did want to get to this. Thinking uh, about guys like this and Foodie Beauty, why do you, why do death fats refuse to see diabetes as a devastating, life-threatening issue? Can't comprehend. See, Michelle, sorry I'm getting to this so late. I saw it earlier, and then my, my ADHD fucking worked out on it. But why? Because it is made seem like it's no big fucking deal in society. It, it is it is made to seem like no big fucking deal uh, in society. Oh, you got the diabetes. You take the you take the metformin. You take the insulin. You're good to go. Have another donut. It's made to seem like it's no big fucking deal, um, and that is a problem. I mean, uh, diabetes. I mean, you lose feet. You lose toes. Uh, you fucking uh, go blind. Kidney disease. I mean, it's it's horrible. It's horrible. But it's made to seem like it's no big fucking deal. And that's a problem. That's a big ass fucking problem. Uh, and I really, 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 really wish we could uh, get past that and see what it is. Something like 100 million people in, in America or 140 million people in America are pre-diabetic. Normally, if you're pre-diabetic within the next five, five to 10 years, you become diabetic. So if we all of a sudden have 140 million people or even 100 million people have full-blown type 2 diabetes in America, the again, the wave of chronic illness and death will be biblical, as I've been saying. But nobody wants to listen. It's, it's fucking crazy. Uh, when I was first diagnosed with uh, type 1 diabetes, it felt so helpless. But when uh, but when you helped me, so, but but you helped me so much, I almost developed binge eating disorder, but you've helped me get on track. Thank you, Alan. Wow, thank you very much. That is very... That is awesome. First of all, congratulations on getting on track. But thank you very much. I just want to make sure you understand. I just said some shit that resonated with you. You're the one that did it. Congratulations. You're fucking awesome. Everybody congratulate Pretty Princess. Uh, Alan, my friend got your coaching. I'm so excited for them, and I can't wait for her whole life to change. Thank you very much. And I believe I know who you're talking about. And they're already signed up. We're waiting for them. I see there's somebody uh, already somebody bought coaching just a little bit ago, too. I'll have you set up very quickly after this. So, uh, holy cow, I just stepped on Velcro and almost died running away because I thought it was a spider. Random, but I understand. Uh, I, I understand. I understand. I think all doctors should get certified in nutrition before they even get their clinicals and do up, uh, education updates for a year. I think so, too, but that ain't never happening. They don't want they, they want you sick, fat and weak. Yeah, uh, they want that's that's literally. I saw a doctor when mine wasn't available. She was badly overweight, huge, looked very unhealthy. The nurse were mostly at large as well. That's what happens. That's what happens. Uh, I hate to be a doer, but do you think that we're ever going to get back to a point where uh, where it's abnormal to be overweight? It will happen. It, it will happen. Here, here's a scenario nobody likes to think about, but if we have some sort of like supply chain collapse, which is, came extremely close to happening during the pandemic, um, people will either fucking get healthy or die. I've been saying it for a while. Uh, do I think that it will happen? Eventually it will. Cause he's, I mean, eventually it will, eventually it will happen. The pendulum will swing back. I hope I really do. Um, that's freaking amazing. Loose skin fashion. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Use the tools at your disposal. Absolutely. Uh, people won't see what they're doing as that bad. It's just like people who do drugs aren't worried about getting uh, getting a bad batch. They just block it out. Yep, that's exactly it. 
I told a family friend to get Nomo and Alchemy for my, for her brother, which by the way, this is not, like, you guys got to go, like I should have said this earlier, but let me, there's a 25% off deal at, uh, at ambrosiacollective.com for Black Friday, 25% off. And on some of the, some of the bundles, it's 50% off. So go there right now, use the links I just showed you. Go and get your go and get your stock the fuck up. Stock the fuck up, motherfuckers. Stock up. Because that is huge, 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 huge savings. Huge savings. But I just told my uh, my friend to get Nomo and Alchemy for her brother, and as he is morbidly obese, diabetic, and has sleep apnea and has endless hunger. I hope he doesn't. I hope so too. Yet my dad passed away from getting infection in a wound in his foot that wouldn't heal. He was diabetic and never took care of himself. That happens to a lot of people. That's how, that's how a lot of people find out they're diabetic, believe it or not. They get a wound on their foot that won't heal, and all of a sudden they go to the doctor, and the doctor's like, well, you're diabetic as fuck. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Alan. You're the best mean bald, bald guy ever. Thank you. I, I'll, I'll take that title. But listen, guys, I'm a little over time. I appreciate you. I might come back on live later. I'm not too sure. I'm going to set up this new client, but I'm also going to cook for my wife because I love when we get to eat together. So I hope all of you have a fucking phenomenal day. God damn.